Hey, welcome back everyone. The next series of lectures will be over transient heat transfer, where the temperature will be changing with time. And we'll look at two models. One's called the lump system analysis, and the other one's called the one-term approximation. So here's a quick question for you. If I take this soda that's at room temperature and put it in the refrigerator, how long will it take to uh, cool it down? Well, once you complete the next series of lectures, you'll be able to answer that question. So let's go in the other room and get started. Okay, we'll start the uh, transient uh, heat transfer analysis uh, using the lump system analysis. This is one way to model transient heat transfer problems. Uh, another method is to use the one-term approximation. We'll do that one next time, but we'll start with the... Uh, a model here called the lumped system analysis and uh, in this problem uh, you know in general if we look at rectangular coordinates the uh, temperature just in general is a function of uh, x y z and t the little t is for time okay so in the lumped an uh, an system analysis we assume that the temperature uh, at any time is uniform. So what that means is that the temperature is uh, not a function of position, it's only a function of time. Okay, so if we consider a body here, just of arbitrary shape, the body may have some mass, M, uh, volume uh, V, uh, maybe some density rho, and some initial temperature, uh, we'll call it T sub I. Okay, so if we suddenly expose this uh, object here to an uh, outside temperature, T infinity, with some uh, that has some convection coefficient h, uh, you would have some heat transfer taking place to or from the object. Okay. Uh, one more thing here, we'll say that the surface area of our body here is a sub s. Okay. So that'll be the uh, geometry we're looking at here. So you know from thermo that uh, if we wrote did a first no, first law analysis of this object, we could say that uh, some small amount of heat transfer, delta Q, is equal to mass times the change in internal energy. Okay? And we can rewrite the mass as uh, density times volume. And then you know if it's, a, if you recall from thermo again, if it is an incompressible substance, we can rewrite the delta U uh, as C delta T. And it's, usually people just call it C sub P, but C sub P or is equal to C sub V for uh, an incompressible substance, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, we can write it as uh, delta U as C delta T. That's from thermo. Okay. All right. Um, so that's one equation we have to calculate the heat transfer. Another one, now this is a true statement, all right? And, and what else is true is Newton's law of cooling says that delta Q is equal to um, H times the surface area times T infinity uh, minus T. Okay, we'll assume that the heat transfer is coming in for right now. Okay. Now, uh, if, we're look, if we're considering some uh, time, delta T, uh, this will be the amount of energy that came in by convection. Now, this is a true statement, and this is also a true statement from thermo. So, if we uh, equate these two delta, Q, uh, delta Qs here, what we would have is rho, volume, C sub P, times the change in temperature, is equal to... Um, H, the surface area, T 
infinity minus t times uh, delta t. Okay, so this is a differential equation. And we can separate terms and integrate. Put all your delta t's on one side and everything else over here with the, the delta little t's in time. So if you separated terms and integrated, what you would get is an equation that looks like this. Hang on just a minute. Okay, you would get an equation that looks like this, the natural log of t minus t infinity divided by t initial minus t infinity is equal to h a negative uh, h as in convection coefficient times the surface area divided by rho v c sub p times uh, little t is in time okay uh, all right so we can simplify this further take the exponential of both sides and we will get t minus t infinity divided by t initial minus t, t infinity is equal to e to the minus b uh, little t where b is equal to h times the surface area divided by rho v c sub p now this has units of uh, 1 over time okay so if you took b to the negative 1 that's uh that's referred to sometime as the uh, time constant okay so here again if you look at here now here's the main equation assuming a, a lumped problem lumped system analysis uh, notice that the temperature changes exponentially so if you look at temperature versus time if we plotted a graph here We'll just say this line right here represents T infinity. So the temperature is going to change like this, qualitatively. But you will get, uh, you will get uh, large changes in the beginning and then it will taper off. Okay, now if B is bigger, you'll get a steeper change like this. So as the time constant increases, you would get a quicker jump, a quicker uh, change in temperature with time. Okay? So that is the lump system analysis. Uh, thing we want to do here is look at the conditions when this problem is uh, a good assumption. When it's a good assumption to assume that, you, that the temperature is uniform. Okay? So we'll just look at a plain wall. We'll look at a plain wall here. Okay, and from the center line. We would have a resistance here due to conduction. And a resistance here due to convection. And this be T infinity out here. Now notice, uh, if the resistance due to uh, conduction is much lower than the resistance due to convection, then the temperature drop across this wall here is going to be very small. In other words, the problem is pretty much going to be uh, uniform. The temperature is. Okay? So let's, let's look at this ratio here. The resistance due to conduction divided by the resistance due to convection. Well, the resistance due to conduction, if you recall from previous lectures, was equal to L over Ka, the conductivity of the wall, okay, divided by 1 over HA, and, and we'll call this length here L. Okay, if we did some algebra on that and simplified it down, what you would see is that the uh, this ratio here is actually equal to L H over K. Okay, 
Now this, in fact, is uh, the criteria that's used uh, to establish whether the lumped uh, pro problem, the lump system analysis, is a good model for your problem. And this is called the BO number. Okay, we just call it BI as a symbol we use. So the BO number is equal to L sub C H over K. We're now uh, in a BO number. We just use a characteristic length, and that characteristic length is volume divided by surface area. Okay. So the usual accepted uh, criterion is that uh, if the BO number is less than 0.1, then the uh, the lumped system analysis is a good model. Okay, so when the BO number is less than 0.1, the temperature will not change in your object by more than 5%. Okay, now notice uh, what would make a good uh, lumped a problem here, lumped system analysis problem. Well, if BO is small, the smaller it is, the better the assumption of the uniform temperature. For example, if the resistance due to conduction was zero, then it would be a perfect uh, model. Okay? Um, but if the conductivity is high, like a metal, like aluminum, or if your object is small, uh, both of those conditions would indicate uh, that they could possibly good, be a good candidate for the lump system analysis model. Okay, so let, the next time we will work some problems, an example problem, using this model. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed the lecture today. So uh, the next time we get together, I'll work a few homework problems. Till then, be good.